about Anavia. I'm so deeply sorry. I didn't mean to hurt him. Teenage criminals often find themselves facing the harsh reality of life sentences in court. I order the Department of Corrections, I sentence you to life in prison. And their reactions can be truly heartbreaking. <laughs> it's a moment when their actions reveal an unintentional touch of irrationality, such that even the most cold-hearted person would pity them. But have you ever wondered what goes through the minds of these teenagers when they hear those life-altering verdicts? In all reality, it put me behind bars, been here five months. In this video, we're going to answer this question by exploring how these young individuals respond when confronted with the crushing weight of a life sentence. It is a sentence of the court that you'd be imprisoned in the West Virginia State Penitentiary for a period of 30 years. Make sure to watch it until the end because you won't want to miss any of the emotional journeys. Aiden Fucci. Was he under a spell? Maybe Aiden has an answer to this. Aiden Fuji lived in a small town in Florida and attended Patriot Oaks Academy. But little did anyone know, Aiden harbored dark thoughts and wicked fantasies, not until he unleashed a part of it. One fateful day, tragedy struck when Aiden's classmate, a 13-year-old girl named Tristan Bailey, went missing. The whole community was in shock, and fear gripped their hearts. The authorities launched a frantic search, hoping to find her safe and sound. But the truth was far more horrifying than anyone could have imagined. It turned out that Aiden was involved in Tristan's disappearance. The evidence painted a chilling picture of what had transpired that night. Video footage showed Aiden and Tristan walking together, seemingly innocently, but little did she know the danger she was in. Later that night, Aiden was caught on camera running away from the area where Tristan's lifeless body was later discovered. The details of Tristan's tragic fate were revealed during the investigation. The autopsy report sent shivers down everyone's spines. Tristan had suffered a staggering of 114 stab wounds scattered across her body. The brutality of the crime was beyond comprehension. As the truth unraveled, Aiden's dark secrets came to light. Witnesses revealed that he had often talked about killing people, and had even expressed his twisted desire to stab someone to death. It was an unbelievable revelation that left the community in disbelief. The more shocking part of the story is that Aiden was only 14 years old at the time. In the court, he was charged with first-degree murder. The gravity of his crime demanded a severe punishment. The judge pronounced a sentence that would haunt Aiden for the rest of his life. Life imprisonment. In the aftermath of the trial, the community was left to deal with the shock and devastation caused by such a heinous act. Tristan's loved ones mourned the loss of a bright young life, with a promising future while the town struggled to comprehend the darkness that had resided within their midst. Maybe everyone would be declared a suspect now. Jeremy Goodale and Willard Miller Jeremy Goodale and Willard Miller were both just 16 years old when they were charged with the horrifying murder of their high school Spanish teacher. What was the motive? According to reports, it was over a bad grade. Goodale revealed how they planned and executed their teacher's murder. They waited for her on her usual walk at a local park, ambushing her and striking her repeatedly. They then dragged her into the woods, beating her to death with a baseball bat. Their plan seemed to end with hiding and burying the body, believing it would never be found. However, their actions would not go unnoticed. A witness came forward, providing Snapchat messages that exposed Goodale and Miller's involvement in the crime. One message surprisingly read, Point of view. You're my Spanish teacher, and this is the last thing you see. Time to hide a body. Goodale ultimately pleaded guilty and testified against his best friend, Miller. Both faced their sentencing, where they had the opportunity to speak and express remorse. Goodale, filled with regret, apologized and expressed his desire to turn back time. Miller also offered an apology, seeking a chance for redemption and a chance to move forward. The judge handed down severe sentences, life with the possibility of parole after 25 years for Goodale and life with the possibility of parole after 35 years for Miller. The impact on the victim's family was immeasurable, with expressions of anger, bitterness, forgiveness, and hope. Rachel Schof and Shelia Eddy 
Do we still have true friends? Maybe this story will spur you to watch your back and think of who you call a friend. In the star city of West Virginia, these two friends, Rachel Schof and Shelia Eddy, found themselves in a courtroom facing a murder charge. It was a shocking turn of events for these individuals who were only just 16 years old when they committed the heinous crime. Their plan was very cruel, as they concealed knives on their bodies with the intention of attacking their friend, Skylar. In a twisted agreement, they set a specific moment for the attack to take place. Rachel Shoaf and Eddie were close friends with Skylar Nee, but something changed. They decided they no longer liked her and hatched a plan to end her life. In a chilling display of unity, Shelia Eddie and Rachel carried out their murderous plan together. They stabbed and killed Skylar. After Rachel Shoaf confessed to her involvement, both teens were arrested. In a bid to cooperate with the authorities, Shof agreed to plead guilty to second-degree murder. Her decision came with the hope of securing a more lenient sentence. But as she stood before the judge, remorse and guilt consumed her. She struggled to find the right words to express her apology for the pain she had caused. The weight of her actions not only hurt the Nee family and those who loved Skylar, but also disgraced her own family. In the courtroom, the judge declared Shof's sentence. She would be imprisoned in the West Virginia State Penitentiary for a whooping 30 years, with the possibility of parole after 10 years. The sentence was a reflection of the severity of her crime, yet it offered a glimmer of hope for redemption and a chance to rebuild a life outside the prison walls. The judge's attention then turned to Eddie, who would face a different fate. The court sentenced him to spend the rest of his natural life in prison, with the possibility of parole after serving 15 years. The judge's decision was tempered with mercy, providing a small opening for Eddie to seek a chance at freedom in the distant future. As the gavel fell, the courtroom fell into a heavy silence. The weight of their actions and the loss they had caused reverberated in the air. The journey towards justice had reached its conclusion, but the scars left behind would forever remain. The story of Rachel Shoaf, Shelia Eddy, and Skylar serves as a cautionary tale revealing event the darkest plan that can lurk within the human heart. Shondell Jackson In February of 1991, a young man named Shondell Jackson was born to his beloved parents, full of potential and dreams for the future. Little did he know that his life would take a dramatic turn on a fateful day in July 2009. On that gloomy day, Shondell found himself strolling through the pleasing campus of the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, accompanied by his close friend, Derek Thomas. As they walked, they met a fellow student named Nathan Potter, a talented and beloved senior at the university. Nathan possessed a creative spirit and was adored by friends and family. They planned to rob Nathan, driven by greed and desperation. At gunpoint, they demanded his money. But when Nathan insisted he had none, tragedy struck. In a moment of heartless brutality, Shondell pulled the trigger, snuffing out Nathan's life. The heinous act shocked the community and left Nathan's loved ones shattered with grief. Shondell and Derek were arrested and soon to face the consequences of their actions. During the trial, Shondell displayed a warming absence of remorse or empathy. Witnesses even reported seeing him smirking and gesturing toward Nathan's devastated family. Nathan's grief-stricken mother, Denise, bravely faced Shondell acknowledging the depth of his evil. Nathan's father, James, pleaded for justice, expressing his desire to protect the community from Shondell's potential future acts of violence. The judge presiding over the case recognized the gravity of the situation. Convinced that Shondell posed a perpetual threat to society, she handed down a sentence that would ensure he would never walk free again. Shondell was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. But the courtroom drama did not end there. As the judge's words sank in, Shondell's pent-up rage burst forth. He fought against the officers attempting to restrain him, his face contorted with pure hatred. The chaos and anguish in the room intensified, leaving everyone in a state of shock and confusion. Now, he has come headlong with the reality of his action. While this courtroom drama was going on, Shondell's family wept and offered words of support torn between their loyalty and the weight of his actions. The scene was one of raw emotion, 
As the devastating consequences of Shandell's choices continued to reverberate throughout the courtroom, the aftermath of this tragedy spread far beyond the courtroom walls. News of the incident quickly spread, capturing the attention of a horrified public. Opinions varied, with some believing Shandell's punishment was just, while others argued for a chance at redemption due to his young age at the time of the crime. But was the excuse good enough? Nathan's grieving mother, in an interview, reflected on the impact of the trial on her family. She shared her hope that Shandell would eventually come to value human life and find redemption, but acknowledged that the responsibility for his future lay solely in his own hands. Meanwhile, Derek, Shandell's accomplice, pleaded guilty and received a comparatively lighter sentence of 12 years in prison. Jacob Morgan Jacob Morgan, at the age of 17, found himself in a distressing situation when he was accused of setting a house fire in Rock Hill, South Carolina, which tragically resulted in the death of a family member. Jacob was entrusted with the care of his 14-month-old stepbrother when the incident occurred. Prosecutors alleged that he intentionally started the fire. During this time, Jacob Morgan made the difficult decision to accept a plea deal. He pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and unlawful neglect of a child. Throughout the proceedings, he consistently expressed his love for his brother and maintained his innocence. However, when the verdict was delivered, Jacob's reaction was heart-wrenching. Overwhelmed by the gravity of the situation, he wept in shock and dismay. After the hearing, the court found that there was enough evidence to charge Jacob with the offenses. He was convicted and sentenced to prison. However, it's important to note that controversy surrounds this case. Over the past several years, Jacob's story has gained attention on social media platforms like TikTok and Facebook. People continue to debate his guilt, question whether a person of his age and state of mind should have been incarcerated, and discuss the tragic death of the 14-month-old child. In recent news, Jacob Morgan, now 24 years old, has been released from prison after serving approximately half of his 15-year sentence. His release has sparked further discussion and interest in his case. The controversy surrounding the events of that tragic day and the subsequent legal proceedings continues to resonate within the public sphere. Keandria Cook Here is the story from Daytona Beach, Florida. This story is about an 18-year-old girl named Keandria Cook. She found herself in some serious trouble. But what was her crime? Keandria used a dating app to plan a robbery and things went south when someone got shot. Thankfully, the person survived, but Keandria faced a possible life sentence in prison. Eventually, she decided to take a plea deal to avoid the conspiracy charge, but she still had to face charges for attempted carjacking and felony battery. Standing before the court, Keandria waited to hear her sentence. But before that, the judge gave her a chance to speak to the victim's family. It's her opportunity to take responsibility or apologize for the harm she caused. With a mix of nerves and remorse, Keandria steps up to the stand and says, I'm sorry. I know I messed up. I shouldn't have gone along with my boyfriend and his friends. I didn't even realize what was happening until it was too late. It was a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The courtroom is silent, as Keandria's words are so emotional and mind-chilling. Her family waits anxiously, hoping for some understanding or forgiveness. Will her words make a difference? The judge then delivered the sentence, and it was more dramatic than anyone expected. He acknowledged that Kyandria didn't physically use the gun and that the victim survived. However, he also emphasized that this was an intentional and planned ambush, and Kyandria played a significant role in it. In light of these circumstances, the judge declared, I find you guilty of all three charges. You'll be sentenced to 20 years in state prison. The room erupted with emotion as Keandria's mother cried out in anguish. You could feel the pains of a mother who never thought her dearly beloved child would someday cross this path of notoriety. The severity of the sentence hits everyone hard, and Keandria breaks down, overwhelmed by the weight of her future behind bars. It's a devastating blow for both her and her mother who had hoped for a different outcome due to a misunderstanding about the plea deal. Soon, the judge realized the miscommunication and allowed Keandria to enter a different plea. The new deal reduced her sentence to 11 years in prison. It's still a long time, 
but it's better than the initial 20-year sentence. Keandria and her mother cling to each other, shedding tears of sorrow and disappointment. They had never imagined the road ahead would be so challenging, but they find solace in the fact that they'll face it together, knowing that justice has been served and their journey towards healing and redemption has just begun. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. This thought-provoking picture captures the emotional and raw essence of teenagers in a courtroom. Their faces tell stories of shattered innocence and unbearable weight as tears stream down their cheeks and disbelief etches itself into their expressions. It's a haunting tableau that draws you in, demanding to uncover the confused emotions that lie beneath the surface. From the first story, you'll witness the unvarnished truth as these teenagers once full of youthful dreams and aspirations, confront the chilling weight of their choices. Through a series of heart-rending courtroom moments, we uncover the complex mix of fear, disbelief, and remorse that washes over them like a tidal wave. It's a journey of reflection that leaves us questioning the complexities of justice, rehabilitation, and the delicate balance between punishment and redemption. Please, while grappling through incredible stories, Allow your emotions to lend you a voice in the comment section to tell us what you feel about these teenagers. Mackenzie Sharilla. Some teenagers get mad and dare crazy bidding when their relationships fail. But why is it so? This is a heartbreaking and tragic story about a teenager named Mackenzie Sharilla from Ohio. She was recently found guilty of four counts of murder for a terrible car crash that took the lives of her boyfriend, Dominic Russo, and his friend, Davian Flanagan. The incident happened in July 2022, and Mackenzie was only 17 years old at the time. On the day of the accident, Mackenzie and the two victims were smoking marijuana together. Mackenzie drove her car into a warehouse without even attempting to hit the brakes. Dominic, who was in the passenger seat, and Davion, who was in the back, tragically lost their lives in the crash. Miraculously, Mackenzie survived but was found unconscious with her Prada slippers still on the accelerator. During the investigation, hallucinogenic mushrooms and a scale were found near Mackenzie's body at the scene. Detectives testified about these findings. According to Assistant Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Tim Troop, Mackenzie wanted to murder Dominic after their relationship had ended. Davian, who was just looking for a ride home, tragically became an innocent victim in Mackenzie's plan. Security video evidence showed that Mackenzie acted deliberately by revving her car to high speeds before crashing into the building. The judge, Nancy Margaret Russo, commented on the case, saying that Mackenzie had a clear mission and executed it with precision. She emphasized that Mackenzie's actions resulted in the loss of life. It was reported that Mackenzie had posted a TikTok video before her arrest, where she bragged about her drug tolerance and feelings of invincibility. In the clip, she talks about being able to do a lot of drugs without any consequences. It's not clear if she filmed the video before or after the crash, but the video resurfaced after her conviction. Her TikTok account has since been set to private. During the trial, Mackenzie's mother, Natalie Sharilla, testified that her daughter had been diagnosed with a medical condition called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, which can cause fainting or lightheadedness if sodium and hydration levels are low. Natalie suggested that POTS might have played a role in the crash. After the conviction, Mackenzie's mother expressed hope that her daughter's attorney would file an appeal. The judge sentenced Mackenzie to 15 years to life in prison for each count of murder, to be served concurrently. The pain and sorrow felt by the victim's families and the consequences Mackenzie will face serve as a stark reminder of the devastating impact of reckless actions and choices. Jennifer Mee. In Pinellas County, Jennifer Mee, once known as the Hiccup Girl, found herself in the spotlight once again, but this time for much darker reasons. At 19 years old, she was arrested on charges of first-degree murder. Jennifer gained international fame at the age of 15 when she developed a prolonged case of uncontrollable hiccups. However, her hiccups disappeared, and the media lost interest in her until her recent arrest. The accusations against Jennifer were grave. She was accused of setting up robberies with victims she met online. 
Allegedly, she recruited her boyfriend at the time, Lamont Newton, and another friend, Lauren Rafer, to assist in these crimes. One particular incident took a tragic turn. Jennifer arranged to meet a 22-year-old man she had encountered online. She lured him to a vacant home, where her accomplices robbed and fatally shot him. The trio only managed to obtain $50 from the robbery and murder. Jennifer, Rafer, and Newton all lived together and were swiftly arrested within hours of committing the crime. Shocking evidence emerged during the investigation, including a recorded phone conversation between Jennifer and her mother, where she admitted her involvement. The trial proceeded, and the jury unanimously found Jennifer guilty of first-degree murder. The judge sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Her co-defendants, Rafer and Newton, received the same sentence. The verdict left the courtroom filled with mixed emotions. Some jurors cried, while others felt a sense of closure for the victim's family. Jennifer's notoriety as the Hiccup Girl had taken a grim turn, serving as a stark reminder of the unpredictable paths life can take. Doug Bolden, a cousin of the victim, expressed the bittersweet nature of the outcome, stating, It's a victory, but there are no winners. The tragedy left a lasting impact on the community, and justice was served, albeit at a great cost. Brandon Spencer Brandon Spencer, an Inglewood resident, found himself at the center of a high-profile case that led to his conviction and subsequent sentencing. In 2012, a shooting occurred at a Halloween party on the campus of the University of Southern California, USC, leaving four people injured. Spencer reportedly also ran but was apprehended by the LAPD for questioning in a parking lot half a mile away. Spencer, who was 19 years old at the time, was accused of being the shooter. From the outset, Spencer vehemently denied any involvement in the shooting and maintained his innocence. He was known among his family, friends, and community as an upstanding individual with aspirations of attending college in Arizona. Many people who knew him well were prepared to vouch for his character. However, during the trial, the prosecution presented what was later revealed to be false evidence and coerced testimony from a defendant in an unrelated case. Despite the absence of any hard evidence against him, Spencer was found guilty by the jury in a remarkably short amount of time, just three hours on a Friday afternoon. On April 18, 2014, Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge Edmund Clark Jr. sentenced Brandon Spencer to 40 years to life in prison for four counts of attempted murder. Throughout the trial, Spencer maintained his innocence. However, the jury ultimately disagreed. As the judge read the sentence, nearly 50 family members and friends packed the courtroom. Spencer's emotions ran high and he had to be restrained by sheriff deputies as he banged his head on the defense table. This harsh sentence effectively shattered Spencer's dreams of a promising future. He was only 19 years old when he was sentenced, and his family and supporters were left devastated by the outcome. However, there have been recent developments that offer hope for Spencer's case. Changes in sentencing laws, such as SB 1437, have brought attention to cases where individuals are convicted of felony murder without being the actual killer or having the intent to kill. These laws aim to rectify unjust sentences and provide avenues for relief, such as vacating a conviction or resentencing. Philip Chisholm 14-year-old Philip Chisholm was sentenced to life in prison for the horrifying sexual abuse and murder of his high school math teacher, 24-year-old Colleen Ritzer, in October 2013. The sentencing took place in Salem Superior Court, where Chisholm was given a life term of 40 years in prison. During the court proceedings, statements were heard from Miss Ritzer's parents, her younger siblings and colleagues who honored her memory by wearing pink, her favorite color. The details of the crime were undeniably disturbing. On October 22, 2013, Chisholm followed his teacher into a school bathroom and tragically took her life with a box cutter. Much of the attack was captured on surveillance footage. Afterward, he transported Miss Ritzer's body from the school in a recycling bin and concealed her in the woods. Shockingly, he returned to school covered in blood. Later that same night, he went to the cinema and used Miss Ritzer's credit card to purchase a ticket. Philip Chisholm's reaction to the verdict was marked by an eerie coldness. His face remained devoid of any emotion, displaying a chilling lack of remorse or empathy for his actions. 
On the first-degree murder conviction, Philip Chisholm was sentenced by Salem Superior Court Judge David Lowy to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. In addition to the murder conviction, he received concurrent 40-year sentences for the charges of rape and robbery. This means that Chisholm must serve a minimum of 40 years in prison. Dylan Shoemaker In the small town of Springville, New York, tragedy struck on that fateful night of March 19, 2013. Dylan Shoemaker, a 16-year-old boy, was left with the care of his girlfriend Ashley Smith's two young sons while she worked tirelessly at a local restaurant. In the morning, a horrifying discovery was made. The lifeless body of Austin, the older of the two boys. The unimaginable had happened, and Dylan Shoemaker was arrested for the murder of his girlfriend's beloved son. Tears streamed down Dylan's face as he stood in the courtroom, trying to apologize to Ashley, his 19-year-old girlfriend. I never meant to harm Austin. I never wanted him to leave this world. He sobbed, his voice choked with remorse. However, his words fell on deaf ears as the jurors remained unmoved by his heartfelt plea. State Supreme Court Justice M. William Bowler, too, refused to be swayed by Dylan's tearful apology. He sentenced the young boy to the harshest punishment possible, 25 years to life in prison. The weight of those words crushed Dylan's spirit as he realized his youth would be locked away for decades to come. Judge Bowler, with a stern expression etched on his face, admonished Dylan. He believed that, at the tender age of 16, Dylan knew right from wrong. The judge dismissed Dylan's claim that he hadn't intended to cause Austin's death, citing the severe beating that led to the innocent child's demise. The trial had been heart-wrenching for all involved. Witnesses recounted the brutal attack, describing the unspeakable head injuries that Austin had suffered. The courtroom was filled with a palpable sense of grief and loss as the tragic details unfolded. The judge, his voice heavy with disappointment, labeled Dylan Shoemaker a manipulator and a deceiver. He spoke of a phone conversation Dylan had with his mother, where he naively discussed using his age and appearance to gain sympathy from the jury, an act of desperation that only further tarnished his character. The judge delved into the disturbing texts that Dylan had sent while babysitting, revealing a troubled side that sent shivers down everyone's spine. It was clear that Dylan's actions had caused immeasurable pain and sorrow, leaving a community shattered and broken. Letters poured in from individuals affected by the crime, 13 heartfelt messages that spoke of the devastation and anguish they had endured. Austin's grandfather, Michael Smith, pleaded with the judge to consider their family's pain, their lives forever altered by this senseless tragedy. Dylan's defense attorney acknowledged the family's grief, sharing their sentiment that if circumstances hadn't pushed Ashley and her children into Dylan's care, this catastrophe might have been averted. The judge posed a haunting question to the defense attorney. What guarantee was there for the safety of the community if Dylan Shoemaker were to be released after just 15 years? The prosecution vehemently argued against placing blame on anyone but Dylan for the tragedy that unfolded. They emphasized that the viciousness Dylan displayed towards Austin was beyond what any normal 16-year-old would do, regardless of their lack of experience as a babysitter. As Dylan turned to Ashley, his voice heavy with sorrow, he tearfully apologized, expressing his love for Austin and his profound regret for his actions. He acknowledged the turbulent nature of his own upbringing but expressed gratitude to his family for their unwavering support. With those final words, Dylan Shoemaker was led away to begin his sentence. He cried out, proclaiming his love for Austin and desperate pleas that he never intended to cause harm. The courtroom, now heavy with a mix of emotions, fell silent. Dylan Shoemaker, now 26 years old, continues to serve his sentence at the Clinton Correctional Facility in New York. The world may have moved on, but the pain and loss linger, a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the haunting consequences of a single moment's darkness. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.